Hello, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to give a little presentation on a concept in engineering known as strength of materials. Now, strength of materials is just one part of, of mechanical engineering, civil engineering, that falls under the general concept of engineering mechanics, you know, stress-strain dynamics. But in this case, strength of materials is very important because it impacts a lot of your mechanical designs. You know, how machines are designed as well as how structures are designed because it makes it more difficult or it makes an engineer accountable to, out, to things like safety as well as product performance. So what I want to do is go over a couple of really basic concepts or really fundamental concepts to uh, strength of materials or that fall within strength of materials. Uh, particularly stress and strain. Now I want you to look at these two examples here. Uh, on the left you have a Jeep being held up on jack stands. Okay, so you've got you know a couple of jack or at least well, at least four jack stands. You know, one on here, here this is holding up its uh, looks like an axle, and then you got two holding up in the front, and then there's one in the back that's not as easy to see. Okay, and on this, on the right side, you have an overhead crane, which is holding up a piece of a, looks like a piece of a ship or some sort of big, heavy piece of equipment. You know, so, you know, you've got a series of cables, you know, throughout that are actually supporting this thing off the ground. You know, as well as all the other elements of the, of the structures, but the main thing I want you to focus in on is the cables as well as the body that you have here that's being supported. In this case, the Jeep. And in this case, this, this piece of equipment here. Now, when you consider the equipment that's being held up, the Jeep and the, and the little shipping equipment, or big shipping equipment, you know, because they've got mass, they both are actually providing a load, or producing a load. You know, so you can put these on a scale and actually measure a weight. You know, and that weight is just another way of saying the load that these things are, are producing. You know, so in this case, you've got a load that is being uh, felt by these cables. And over here, you've got a load that's being supported by these jack stands. You know, all the jack stands are actually supporting the load, load of the Jeep. Now, when you've got a force or a weight or a load, you know, you know there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction to that. And in the jack case of the jack stand and the cables, it's going in the opposite direction. So in this case, you've got a load of the Jeep going down onto the jack stand, and you've got an internal resistance to that going up through the jack stand, through, through the jack stand. So you've got an external load and an internal. With, with this crane, you've got an external load being provided by this big mass in the red box, and you've got this internal reaction inside of each of the cables, you know, that's holding it off the ground. Now this is where the whole idea of strength of material starts to get interesting because you know as you're as an engineer you've got to design situations like these and you've got to be able to understand you know how to keep these situations from becoming disastrous you know you can't afford to have some of these cables breaking or these jack stands buckling and collapsing and potentially hurting somebody or just you know having a shorter lifespan because they've become too distorted to use even if they they don't hurt anybody so here's what you have to or what has to be taken into account here's the concept that starts to get a little more interesting oh I also wanted to go back and, and understand these there's two different types of loads have a specific name one is a compressive load because this is actually loading downward you know, and causing a compressive force between, you know, within the jack stand, actually potential of crushing the jack stand, so a compressive load. Since this one is under tension on the hoist, you've got a tensile load. And then there is a third load that I want you to be, uh, be aware of. And this load is, can be found within the design itself, um, typically, but not always, at things like joints, you know, transition points, like bolts. In this particular case, we can think of it as a shear load. Or a shear load would be a cross section or a load that goes crossways to the thing that you're concerned with. In this case, the bolt itself. You know, in this case, the bolt itself. So it, it has to deal with something called a shear load. And the way that shear load works is if you have a load on these two plates that's being held together by the, uh, you know, by that bolt, they have their own load and that's known as a shearing load. It's kind of a scissor effect to that load. Now, going back to my 
uh, previous statement. You know, as an engineer, you've got to understand, you know, the load that your condition, the loading conditions that you're under, and the potential effect that it's going to have on the member that you're concerned with. And that brings us to the concept of uh, stress and strain. Now, what stress is? Stress represented by the Greek symbol sigma, lowercase sigma. What that is is the internal resistance of a material to the distorting effects of an external force. You know, so if you've got uh, a, this cable under under a certain amount of load, what you have is a stress created because it's resisting this external force. Now, the way you can look at this mathematically, uh, stress is represented as a ratio between that load that you have and the area. Okay, now there's a lot of things that can impact how this load or how what this stress ultimately is. You know, or you know, how strong of the material and how you know good your design is. You know, such as the nature of the material itself. You know, using steel versus aluminum. But one thing that I want you to be aware of is that there's a the amount of stress that's in any body is a ratio between the external load or excuse me, the, the load and the cross-sectional area. You know, and that's just sigma. So the larger of an area, the more you reduce the stress. The larger the load, the higher the stress. And this is found in, you can use, uh, has units of newtons per meter square, pounds per square inch. You know, so, you know, that, so the, the amount of area, the cross-sectional area of the member that you're, you're looking at has a major impact on the amount of stress that you have. Now, when a member is under load, you know, has a stress upon it, you know, it doesn't just go from being perfectly normal and sitting in, you know, a nice safe condition to one day breaking if you get it wrong. There's an actual re second thing to take into account, and that's the strain. The strain represented by this symbol, epsilon. Some people just say E, but, you know, or epsilon. It's the deformation of a material that's under stress. So to look at these two examples, or three examples, you know, so you've got this Jeep on the jack stands, they're under a load, there is a stress, and depending on how much stress this is under, you're going to get some deformation in these jack stands. Same with this uh, situation with the crane. You know, these are under load, these cables are under a load based on this piece of equipment. You know, depending on the cross-sectional area and the nature of the material, there's going to be some distortion or deformation. You know, these cables are potentially going to, going to stretch before they actual, actually break. Same goes with uh, this uh, bolt in shear. The amount of load it's under, there's going to be an amount of deformation. Now, from the original state to whatever it deforms to, it becomes a ratio to, this, to, its, original, to its original length, the original state. So the definition of strain mathematically is just that change in length versus the original A, delta L over L, or change in L original over L, or L original, original length. Now, that's just the two uh, key concepts, or two of the key concepts in strength of materials. What I want to do in an upcoming video is show there's a very strong mathematical relationship that fall, all materials fall under, that engineers use quite frequently. Uh, showing that direct re uh, relationship between stress and strain.